The following portion of daytime is sponsored by Orthopedic Medical Group of Tampa Bay. Knee pain is a common problem that can be improved with both surgery and non-surgical treatments. Here to share a modern approach to joint preservation is Dr. Mark Sando with Orthopedic Medical Group of Tampa Bay. Dr. Sando, welcome. Thanks for having me, Maggie. So what are some common causes of knee pains and what kind of symptoms should, will we experience? Sure, so knee pain can develop in it for a lot of reasons. It can be more related to just the aging process. As people get older, they can start to develop damage in a joint. That can lead to pain and swelling. Small injuries that wouldn't have necessarily caused them pain before as that slower degenerative process has happened can lead to the development of swelling and pain. We can also have injuries to the knee from a sporting activity, falls, accidents, traumatic injuries, skiing, car accidents, things like that. So we see a lot, a whole wide variety of reasons for people to develop knee pain. Talk to me about cartilage because you hear that word a lot surrounding sure. the knee. What is cartilage and why is it so important to a healthy knee? Cartilage is a structure that's made out of collagen fibers uh, and we have all types of cartilage throughout the body. And our nose, our ears are made out of cartilage, but in the joint specifically uh, and in the knee, it's called articular cartilage. And if you've ever looked at the end of like a chicken bone, it's the smooth, shiny white stuff on the end of it. It acts as a cushion for the bone and it helps to protect it. So I like to tell my patients, think of the cartilage in your knee like a black top, the black top on a road. You're born with a nice fresh coat. As you age, as you're active, as you do more things or have an injury, you'll get fissures, cracks, potholes in that road. Eventually the road may be completely washed away and need a resurfacing. That's where we're looking at things like joint replacement. I like to deal with and try to treat those injuries before they get to that point. So when people have more of the smaller injuries to the cartilage, there are a lot of other techniques, both conservative and surgical, that we can do to try to help preserve the native joint and restore some of that cartilage stability and protect the joint. The two most common types or the ones you hear about the most related to the knee are ACL tears and meniscus injuries. How can those affect the long-term function of the knee? Correct, so the ACL is very important for the stability of the knee. If we look at this knee model here, you'll see in this, uh, the center of the knee, the ACL is a ligament here that prevents the knee from kind of shifting and rotating. The meniscus similar are these pads of cartilage in the knee that help protect the articular cartilage on the end of the bone. So an injury to the ligament can lead to instability of the knee. An injury to the meniscus can decrease the amount of cushion that the joint sees and cause further damage to the cartilage. If left untreated, an ACL injury will lead to an unstable knee and that can lead to more damage or more wear of that cartilage over time and the development of arthritis in the knee. And so we typically want to try to treat ligament or meniscal injuries sooner to slow down that progression of cartilage wear, especially in a young patient. If surgery is necessary, what is joint preservation surgery, which you offer? Yeah, so what we want to do with a cartilage injury in the knee, if we have a specific isolated area, is try to do things to slow down the progression of that. And so if someone has a concomitant injury like an ACL injury or meniscus injury, we want to stabilize the knee or fix the meniscus to try to protect that cushion. If people have gotten kind of past that and have more diffuse wearing, we can actually do some procedures like cartilage transplant or cartilage repair procedures, sometimes using tissue from the patient themselves or sometimes using a donor uh, cartilage graft that we can put into the knee. It's also very important when we're looking at joint preservation to look at many factors in the knee. So the cartilage in the knee sees stress for a number of different reasons. If the knee is unstable, like we talked about with the mm -hmm. ACL, we also need to reconstruct the ACL at the same time as the cartilage surgery. Otherwise, the, the cartilage that we put in, the new cartilage will just wear out. Similarly, if people have alignment issues, so if they're born with a you know, bow-legged or knock-kneed, uh, they're going to load different parts of the joint differently, and that can lead to increased stress on that area. And so when we're thinking about having to restore cartilage, we may have to also consider doing something called an osteotomy, which you see in this model here. This is the tibia or the shin bone here, and what the osteotomy is is we create a fracture in the knee, actually, and open up the, the uh, joint and put an implant in to help stabilize that or a plate and screws to hold that joint in that position. So essentially a controlled breaking of the bone mm -hmm. to realign it and take stress off of that area where we've done the cartilage restoration to wow. so it doesn't get further damage. So when we're looking at joint preservation, it's really trying to do all of these things, alignment, stability, and then the cartilage restoration itself. Very comprehensive. Thank yeah. you, doctor. Thank, Thank you, you for Maggie. being here, Dr. Appreciate Mark it. Sando. And if you'd like more information about Orthopedic Medical Group of Tampa Bay, you can visit omgtb.com. Daytime, we'll be right back.